everyone, so today we're going to go through how to create a really structured furniture board um, really quickly using Photoshop and InDesign. So I'm going to be using one of my templates that's available in the shop today, but you could also create your own templates and still take advantage of a really kind of quick and easy workflow. <laughs> So first things first, I would suggest having a few uh, master pages or parent pages as the most recent versions of InDesign will call them set up that have just a few different layouts that would be likely helpful when it comes to your um, furniture boards. So I have applied this one to my uh, sheet that I'm working with. And basically it gives me quite a few frames that I can infill with images. I have my logo kind of permanently um, put in the, the same corner on all of my templates. And I have the opportunity for me to add in some details here. So now what we're gonna do is go into Photoshop and actually play with the images that we need to use. So I have a collection of images that we're gonna use for our particular uh, furniture board. But because we've kind of like taken them from the various sources where you would get images for a design, they're gonna need a little bit of editing to make sure they, they work well. Um, so for example, sometimes if you have really large kind of images, and this one's quite nice because it does have the the white background, but it's a JPEG, so there's no transparency to it. So you can't actually kind of layer this on top of anything else if you want, want, were wanting to. So I usually like to try to make it where we can remove that background. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the background of anything with a white background, and then we're gonna get into what we are gonna do with the photos after that. So to remove a white background, so first things first, here is a large coffee table. So I'm gonna right click and say layer from background and then okay. And I'm gonna see what the um, object selection tool in Photoshop does. So if I just drag my corner and looks like it's selected everything. So it looks like it's selected the entire table, but what I actually want it to do is um, select everything but the table. And that's really easy to do. So basically I go to select and then say select inverse and get used to that shortcut because it's a really handy one that I know I use a lot. So inverse and then delete. And now we can just save this particular image in a folder that uh, makes sense for our project. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and do the same for all of the other images with white backgrounds. All right, now that we have these images created with no background, I'm gonna go ahead and place them in the InDesign file. So I go into my InDesign file and I'm just gonna say Control D and place the images. So first things first, I'm gonna do the sofa and let's just select all of them and okay. And now we have our images that we're gonna actually just drop into some of these frames. Now, don't worry, we're gonna rearrange them as we kind of get going. So I'm gonna just drop one there. Um, let's drop one there. There, big one there, that one there. And let's see what these look like. If I select everything, right click, fitting, fill frame proportionally, and Actually, I think that looks okay. What I'm gonna do here is 
fit content proportionally just so we have the whole thing there and on this one we're gonna flip it because we want it to be facing the correct way and now we're gonna do the same thing here on the fill frame proportionally and I'm gonna move this down a little so now all I'm doing is reworking with the images within frames in this kind of setup within InDesign. So we have kind of some basics set out here. Um, I'm okay with all of that so far. Now we're gonna be adding a couple of more, more textural images, um, including some cushions. So real quick, let's go back to Photoshop. And first of all, here's an image of the some uh, plants in little pots that would go on the coffee table. Now, you could definitely use the, um, let me lay it from background, use the object selection tool here because there's a good contrast. And go ahead, select it all, and then remove that background. Um, so if I did control shift I, I could remove the background and just make it, you know, as is. But I actually think I like having some textured background. Um, so I'm going to leave this one as is, and we're just going to place it into the, um, the, the setup kind of just, again, just as is. All right, now the other image we want to play around with is this one that shows some cushions. Now, this kind of linen and velvet um, cushion combination is the one that we're proposing, but we want it to be in some slightly different tones. So this is where I'm going to go in and do some adjustments. Now, I like to go ahead and do my color adjustments within um, either the hue saturation, the color balance, or black and white with a tint. Now there's a whole video that I'll um, put in a, a title card here for you to click if you're interested in how to change the color of a photo. But so for this one, let's just play around. Um, and basically it's going to be this um, kind of that burnt orange cushion that we needed to change because obviously it would kind of crash, clash with the sofa that's being proposed. So there we go. Now I'm going to go in and deselect the part of the stool. And so I'm just using the magic wand here. And there we go. So I have this selected now, and so what I'm going to do first is go into black and white, and we're going to make sure it gets tinted. Now right now it's just tinting this kind of, um, adding a bit of a beigey tone, and I wanted it to be more of like a teal navy. Actually that right there feels pretty good. So, you know, really quickly I was able to just kind of change that. Um, coloring there. Now you may notice that the reflected light is still showing that orangey bit and so to do this I'm gonna go back here to my object selection and so I've selected this pillow now and here, what I want to do is actually adjust the color balance, and we're going to just make it a little bit cooler. So, no real kind of reds to be found. And 
and there we go. So I've changed these colors as I wanted, so now I'm going to save them in the dedicated folder. place them down here. So something like this. Now the last thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to delete these frames. So I'm doing control shift to select them and delete them. And I'm going to make this chair quite a bit larger and then put this table kind of right behind. So let's see what that looks like. And just to let you in on how I'm kind of doing that preview. It's just with the W shortcut key. So... All right, so we have this set up now and I just need to add a few more images and those are gonna be ones of kind of art on the wall. So this is where I left um, these frames kind of as is, I didn't resave them. And basically it's all frames with a transparent background and so I need to add in a couple of the um, images that will be used as artwork on the wall. So give me one second on that. All right, so now let's save this. And go back to our page. Now here, I'm gonna do the same thing that I've gotten kind of done here and do more of like a cropped, um, kind of textural image rather than the object itself. So something like that. Now I'm going to do a little bit of playing around with the composition and we'll add in a couple of more final touches. All right, I'm happy enough with this as a, a composition, but I am going to add one more graphical element, and that's just going to be a little bit of a, a swatch of a painted wall color. And first things first, I'm just going to make it black, and then we can move it behind. So arrange, send to back, and now it's behind all of these other um, bits and pieces. And yeah, I think that's fine. I'm gonna do one more kind of strip kind of down at the bottom. 
and center back and there we go so now I just need to apply the actual color so I'm gonna go grab that color um, in terms of its CMYK colors always play with the composition because you never kind of know where it's going to lead you there we go i think with that, I'm actually quite happy with this. So I played around with uh, the composition quite a bit. So that's always kind of the case of you want to use your templates as a starting point, but then play around with what's going to make sense for your particular project and client. So this is a contemporary living room and we wanted to show kind of the pops of color and texture kind of going on here, but at the same time also show these key selections um, here. So as a result though, with just the two programs and with less than about a half hour, um, I was actually able to go through and create a really stylized, polished um, furniture board that would look great in, alongside a set of rendered floor plan drawings and rendered section drawings, as well as um, any kind of 3D visuals. So I hope that helps. If you liked that video, check these out and click to subscribe where you'll be the first to see new videos I release every Monday. Thanks for watching!